Okay, let's talk about something that you definitely really, really need to understand if you're going to do very well in algebra. And uh, you're going to see this in basic algebra, but uh, the importance of this topic is going to uh, just uh, increase as you continue to study mathematics. And that is dealing with functions and domain and range. And uh, here what we're going to do is take a look at this function. Uh, you might be saying, well, what is the function? Well, we're not going to determine... Uh, the domain and range of a particular function. Okay, we're not looking at like an f of x equals some, you know, particular mathematical uh, statement here. What we're going to do is determine the domain and range graphically. Okay, so here is a graph of some function. Maybe this is like a logarithmic function or whatnot. But based upon this graph, we want to determine the domain and range. And this is very, very important. You need to be able to uh, know how to do this. And we're going to kind of um, cover a few basic concepts about domain and range and obviously um, talk about how to describe the domain and range of this particular function. You got to be able to define uh, or determine the domain and range graphically, okay, even when you don't have the actual function. So this is kind of a classic algebra question. And we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, and I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program. I found the link in the description uh, in the, the video. But um, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big courses like Algebra, Algebra 2, Geometry, Pre-Algebra, College Algebra. Going to be launching Pre-Calculus here soon. But I have many specialty test preparation courses. So if you're studying for like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, a teacher certification exam, Alex, AccuPlacer, there's so many different type of exams, any kind of placement exam or nursing entrance exam. So many of these exams have significant math uh, portions on their exams. And if you don't get to the math uh, portion of those particular exams, you won't get your certification or you won't place into your program. So there's a lot of people who are studying mathematics outside of an actual math course. So I recognize that, and I have very, very comprehensive, excellent uh, test preparation math courses. You can check out my full catalog by don't, going to my site. Now, if I don't have uh, what you're looking for, drop me a line and our contact form, and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. So if that's your situation, I could definitely help you out. And obviously, I help, I help those of you who are struggling in class, if you're taking, let's say, college algebra and, or algebra two and you're just frustrated, well, my program can definitely help you out. But one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is to be taking great math notes. It's so critical. It's really the foundation of learning uh, mathematics or learning anything uh, for that. But uh, basically, over decades of teaching math, one thing I've just seen, uh, it's just apparently true, those students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who just, you know, rather look at their cell phone or do their homework in another class or maybe talk to their best friend uh, during math class, you know, you're going to have a tough time doing well on tests. It's just obvious. That was a, that was me way back in the good old days. So, I, you know, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. You know, I, you know, I didn't know this stuff until later, much later. But when I was in school, uh, I was completely distracted. And that was before there were cell phones. Well, we had, you know, back in the 80s, we had gigantic, huge cell phones. They were really no fun. I didn't have one. They were like $5,000. Anyways, couldn't do anything with them other than just make phone calls. But I mean, I mean, think about it. Uh, a cell phone is complete. Everyone is looking at their cell phone, including myself. So, you know, people's focus is here, not on what the teacher is telling you to pay attention to. So to keep yourself focused, uh, you got to engage in note-taking, okay? That's going to really um, keep you honest in terms of, hey, I'm doing the right things in class right now, okay? And your notes will be a work of art. You'll be like, wow, look at all these great notes. I understand them. I could study from them. Well, that's a reflection of you working hard in class paying attention, okay? So Got to improve when you're note-taking. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find uh, the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, now let's talk about this particular problem. And uh, this is, of course, an example of one type of problem uh, that you might face. 
but it's a common uh, problem again, okay? Now, what I'd like you to do, if you think you know what to do here, is pause the video and tell me what the domain or range of this particular function is, okay? Okay, now, if you uh, gave it a whirl, uh, let's go ahead and see how you did, and let's quickly just look at something here. Let's say I have f of x is equal to x squared, okay? f of x is equal to x squared. Now, what is the x? This is a function, okay? Our x, this is the variable x, is our input value, okay? This is our input value here, okay? Now we plug in something like f of 3. We're going to re uh, replace this x with 3, okay? So we have 3 squared is equal to 9, all right? So 3, okay, is uh, a number that would be part of the domain of this particular function, all right? Now, one thing you need to know about functions is that f of x is equal to y, all right? But basically what we're saying is when I plugged in 3 into the function, I got f of 3 was equal to 9. So effectively, what's going on here, when x was 3, okay, when x was equal to 3, my f of x or my y value was equal to 9. Now, you could think of this as a point that's on this uh, function's graph, okay? So f of x is equal to x squared. So when x is 3, okay, a point on any, uh, on an xy plane is going to be xy, right? When x was 3, uh, y is uh, 9, okay? So the point 3, 9 is on this graph, right? So 3 would be part of the domain. It's not the entire domain. It's just 3 is in the domain, and 9 is part of the range, okay? So the range is the set of output values, okay? And the domain is a set of input values. But what I want you to kind of really be familiar with here is that x, okay, the x-axis is uh, associated with our domain, okay? So x is our part of the domain, and y, okay, the y's are part of the range. Now let's take a look at this uh, this function's graph, okay, real quick. And if you don't know, this right here, f of x is equal to x squared, is a basic parabola. So let's just sketch this out and cover a couple basics here about functions. My functions are one of my favorite topics. If you just spell the word out, functions, look at the root word there, it's fun, okay? There's always clues uh, about the name of things. Functions are fun. And they better be fun because you need to like embrace them because there's so much uh, about them in mathematics. Got to know a lot about functions. Okay, so here, the graph of this, f of x equals x squared, would look like this, okay? All right, something like that, okay? It's a parabola. Now, we said when x was 3, 1, 2, 3, okay, uh, when we plug that into this function, we got uh, f of 3 is equal to 9. So the point 3, 9, okay, is on that graph. So here, here's x, 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis. And then up here, let's say this isn't the perfect uh, scaled graph, but this is the point here, 3, 9. That's on the graph, okay, of this parabola, okay? So just looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, uh, here's my x value, 3. It's on the x-axis. Now, if you look at this parabola, okay, this, what's going on here, do I have, can I plug in 4, for example, into this uh, function? Yes, I can. Can I plug in values over here? Yes, I can. It's just going to, the y values are going to be over here. How about 0? Well, 0, this is going to be 0, 0, right? Here, negative 1 is going to be positive 1. Negative 2 will be a positive 4. If I just plug in these values, like f of negative 2 goes into this x squared, that would be negative 2 squared. So that's going to be f of negative 2 is equal to a positive 4, meaning that the point negative 2, 4 is on this graph. Okay, it's where here's negative 2, 4. And, of course, this is not completely in scale, but if we look here, let's just kind of study what's going on uh, on this, all our input values. All our input values are x values. Now, how many x values can I plug into this uh, particular function? Well, I can plug in all of these values, okay? The entire number line 
along this x-axis, all right? And we would describe that as uh, the real numbers. Okay, there's no restrictions here. I could plug in anything into this function. So our domain would be all the real numbers, okay? So hopefully you understand that. Now, what about our range, okay? Now, our range is going to be where, now graphically, let me just get, slow down here. Graphically, okay, I'm looking at this graph and it's spanning. Look at the graph and kind of look down towards the x-axis, okay? You're saying, where is this parabola spanning along the x-axis? Okay, I'm focused in on the x-axis to think about the domain. I'm like, well, it's spanning the entire width of the x-axis. So that's going to be where my domain's at. Now, how about the y-axis? Okay, where the graph is spanning, okay, along the y-axis, that's going to be our range. So what about this graph? Okay, well, this graph is only... Um, occurring, if you will, in the its positive uh, sector, right? From zero and all the positive y's. So our range, our range here would be all y's greater than or equal to zero. Or in other words, all positive uh, real numbers, all these guys right here. Because the graph, if you think of it in terms of where it's spanning with respect to the y-axis, it's just going from zero on up positive. It's not down here. Okay, so this can be a little bit confusing. Uh, hopefully, you know, you're kind of understanding this. If you understand this, uh, you know, you're with me right now, then that's excellent. Okay, so we can look at a graph and we're going to associate, we're going to study the graph in terms of what it's, uh, how it spans along the x axis. That'll be our domain. And then how it spans with respect to the y axis will be our range. So let's go ahead and practice that now with this particular graph. Okay, so now we've got this function, all right? And I'm saying, okay, what is uh, the domain here? Well, let's just think of this graph with respect to the uh, x-axis, okay? So our domain. Well, if you look at the graph here, it's kind of, you know, you look down towards the x-axis. It's all these x's here have values on this graph and it looks like over this way, but obviously, over here, we have no x values, there's no graph. So our graph has x values from here all the way out to infinity, okay? Now, this little line, this when you see a graph and you have like a little dotted line here and it looks like the graph is approaching this dotted line, this is what we call an asymptote in mathematics, meaning that this graph is um, approaching, getting closer to that line, but will never cross over it and never touch it, okay? So when you have asymptotic behavior, that's what it means. This line's gonna get infinitely closer, but this is gonna be a border, okay, here, it will never touch. So that means what? Okay, well, let's describe our domain in terms of x, okay? So all these x's have to be, well, they're all these values, not, not from negative six, this is negative six, all these values, so we could say it this way. All x is greater than negative six. Okay, that's pretty much uh, an easy way to uh, to describe the domain here, right? Now there's another way you can do it using interval notation. Let me see here. We could do it like this: negative six to positive infinity. That's another way we could write or express the domain. But this is a, a little bit more advanced. But as long as you understand that this graph is spanning from negative six, but not touching negative six, just write anything greater than negative six all the way to positive infinity, that's what uh, counts, okay? All right, so, so now we study the graph with respect to the x-axis first, okay? That's our domain. So now we kind of switch this up and say, okay, how about the range, all right? What about the range? Well, the range, is doing what? Well, this graph is going down. We're going to look at this in terms of the y-axis. Okay, we're like, hey, where is this? What's going on in terms of the y-axis? Well, I got y values here, y values here. Ooh, I even got y values down here in the negative span as well. So it looks like the entire y-axis is covered. So our range could be the set of uh, all real numbers. There's a lot of different ways you can write that. You could say... Uh, you could say it this way, that would be uh, your range. You would put a little R like that. And you can use this other interval notation saying from negative infinity 
to positive infinity. If you're not familiar with interval notation, uh, check out some of my other videos in my uh, algebra, probably my algebra 2 pre-calculus playlist on interval notation. Okay, but these are just ways to express this. But you can, um, you know, tell, you know, from a graph what the domain and range are, and you can even determine. You know, is this thing a function in the first place? All right, and here's a bonus question. How can I tell whether this thing is a function? Okay, well, it would pass the vertical line test. All right, in other words, if I could draw a vertical line through this graph, it only chops through one time at any point. That, in fact, represents a function. And then if it passes the HLT, that's a one-to-one -one function, meaning that it has a function inverse. You see, there's all kinds of, we're not going to get into all this stuff, but there's just so much fun to be had when we're talking about functions, okay? And hopefully you're just so excited, you're like, you're like, I can't wait to learn about functions, okay? Uh, yes, just tons and tons of stuff. You hear the word all the time, right? Like quadratic functions, you know, linear functions, exponential functions, but no one really knows what that word means. There's very, very specific um, technical definitions to functions, and some very, very important, but... You absolutely need to know how to um, analyze the domain and range of functions graphically. Okay, and hopefully this uh, video helped you out. And if it did, please consider helping me out by smashing that like button. That uh, certainly helps me. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. Uh, it's a great platform for someone like myself, myself, who is obsessed with teaching mathematics in a clear and understandable manner. Okay. So uh, if you go to my channel, I have uh, various playlists organized from basic to advanced math. But my best help will always be in my math help program. You know where to find those links. Um, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.